Uh, thank you very much. So, yeah, as, uh, it's a good crowd. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so uh, as an introduction, I'm uh, from the CSIRO. I'm just going to turn darker mode on for a sec because it's new hotness. Um, yeah, so I'm, I work for CSIRO. I'm their uh, lead developer on the uh, Mac SOE, or we call it a, a base operating environment, uh, but essentially the same thing. So. I look after the uh, general config that goes out. I've been working in IT there for the last 16 years, so I'll be interested to hear what uh, uh, Pete has to say in his talk this afternoon. Um, a first thing, a disclaimer. Uh, I am not a security expert, uh, nor do I play one on TV. Um, any decisions you make as a result of anything you learn here, um, please take that in consideration. Go talk to your security people uh, at the place you work. Um, I'm not responsible if your machine blows up as a result of this. But uh, generally, yeah, use you know common sense. Um, uh, you know, research before you uh, implement any sort of security thing. Run it past your uh, IT guys, security guys. Um, LAPS is only one part of the security puzzle. Um, there are m many technologies out there. Uh, as you saw in Ed's uh, keynote earlier this morning, um, security is, can be a, uh, a very sort of you know, a complex um, uh, topic. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one piece. Uh, there are multiple things that can go into uh, making your, uh, your uh, desktops uh, more secure. Uh, and what LAPS uh, addresses uh, in this regard is the security of your local administrator accounts. Uh, so yeah, so this is uh, a bit of a text off uh, Microsoft's website. Uh, so admins have long used a common uh, local admin account with the same password on computers. Um, this has been a, a practice that it's about as old as, as computers have been around and as, been, as long as they've been managed. Um, the problem with it is it does provide an attacker with a single point of entry. Uh, if your common password gets out, what do you do? If your uh, organisation is either actively attacked or your password gets out via a you know, non- um, uh, inadvertently released, say, as, you know, someone just uploads a file to GitHub or something like that. All of a sudden, your password's out there. How do you mitigate against that? How do you realise that that's happened? How do you go th th about and change all the passwords on your devices? It becomes a uh, a, uh, a bit of a you know a bit of an issue. Um, so we're going to look at a little bit of a an actual case study. This happened uh, not too long ago. Some of you might be aware of this. Uh, 4th of May, uh, Telstra uh, sent a uh, security advisory out to all their people, uh, to all their clients, uh, that um, a uh, vulnerability in its service, uh, it was reported in the media. So this is not you know, private information, this is public information. So it might seem like I'm naming and shaming, but this is all sort of out there. Uh, this is a quote from uh, the register uh, that uh, when, they did, when they went and talked to them, uh, Telstra basically said um, that they're advising clients to disable these TOPS or TIRC accounts. Um, when they asked what they were for, uh, they didn't really, weren't really forthcoming, uh, but essentially it was some sort of uh, privileged administrator account and all the devices. Uh, and most people speculated that these accounts uh, were set up on these services with a default password. Um, this was confirmed by um, Rory Murdoch on, uh, on Slack. Uh, ran, a, ran up an uh, instance of one of their services and uh, wanted to see if he could find out what the password was. Uh, so this is a bit of a shout out to him uh, for finding that out. So I said I'd do that, so I did. Um, <laughs> And yes, he did actually manage to find out what the password was. 
Now the problem with uh, the problem with finding out what the password was is that's the same password that's all on all those machines. So they Telstra have become inadvertently uh, through password insecurity have opened themselves up to um, not just uh, one client's service, but all the services that use those accounts. So lateral movement in between uh, these services is a big problem. So yeah, so I'm not sure what the password was. Um, so what is LAPS? Uh, LAPS is a way to mit against, mitigate against some of those risks. Um, uh, from that come about from using the same password everywhere. Uh, LAPS stands for Local Administrator Password Solution. Uh, this is a Microsoft terminology. Uh, they uh, created and released uh, on, in 2015, so it's not super old. It's probably old by IT standards, but 2015 is not that long ago. Um, and, oh, there we go. Basically what it does is it randomizes the password for the administrator account. This is on Windows computers. Uh, it stores the password in an AD attribute for the machine object. Uh, it expires the password on a regular basis, and this is an expiry which you can set. Uh, and it's mainly designed to work with Windows computers in an AD environment. Uh, so that's what you know, Microsoft do. They wrote it for that. They released it for that. So how does it work, sort of in practice? Well, there's the diagram from Microsoft. Um, it's a little bit sort of hairy, um, but I'll see if I can distill it down a bit. Basically, you have a computer bound to AD. Uh, this uh, computer has a machine account and the machine account and password. It uses those credentials to write to uh, extended attribute uh, and then updates the local password to match. Uh, Active Directory becomes the password database for this. So the password is now as secure as however secure your AD is. Uh, so it's important to make sure that you don't have the attributes open to anyone who can see these objects, uh, see the objects. Um, it does require a schema change to AD, so make sure you run that past your uh, security guys. Uh, these are the two fields essentially you interact with. So one is the uh, admin password expiration time is obviously the time that the password expires by. Uh, and this is where the actual password is. Now it's stored in here in a recoverable format. When you look at the field, you'll see the clear text password. This is not encrypted apart from the encryption that you get with AD. Uh, that's the intent. The intent is you need to be able to recover the password. So. Again, speak to your Windows domain admins about setting this up. Passwords, uh, schema changes are a, uh, a turn on only thing. You can't turn on and turn off. Um, there's good, I uh, can't remember, one of the podcasts, I think, um, had a Windows admin on there about asking for AD uh, changes. It's not a super big deal. Like, if you turn this on, it's not going to be a massive issue, but. Uh, they tend to be a bit uh, wary about it because you can't turn them off once you turn them on. Uh, the MCS admin password is write-only for the machine account. It cannot read its own password. Uh, this field is also, you can set security on that field separately from the rest of the object. So you can have, you know, normal admin accounts can read uh, attributes for, a, for an AD object for a machine and not see this password field. They'll see the password expiration field um, it's read write by the machine. So it can read its own password uh, expiry date and it can write back to it. It needs to be able to do that because what it, how it works is it will read the expiration time uh, on a period, or, uh, on a uh, schedule. And if its current time is after that, it'll expire the password, it'll change it and then write the new password to AD. Uh, password recovery is by a Windows uh, Laps UE tool uh, that Microsoft released. It's uh, fairly basic. Um, I did actually write a bash script that does the exact same thing, so if you want to do it in the terminal. Uh, it's available on my GitHub. Uh, this is what the Laps UE looks like in, uh, in Windows. It's uh, functional. It does what it's supposed to do. There is a, a minor issue with it. 
the font that it uses to render the password can make some characters look like uh, other characters. So for example, I and lowercase l look exactly the same. Uh, if you're cutting and pasting from uh, this to uh, something else, then that's not an issue, but if you're trying to read it. Um, internally in CSRO, uh, we use this, but we mainly use a different tool that we developed just to mitigate against that. And we also do a couple of other things. Uh, and we've made that a tool available uh, to our staff uh, via a web uh, website, uh, internal available website, uh, so that they can access it on their phones if they need to. Uh, so generally how it works is, you know, in the past we would have our administrator account on our machine and it would have our common password that we keep on all, on all the machines. So what Slaps does instead is it replaces that password with something random. So you can set the parameters of these passwords, how long it is, how many characters is in there. Stores, uh, locks that computer up with that, or locks the account, I should say. Stores that password up in AD. Then uh, your local admin user comes along. They need to access it, so they access it over there, and they unlock the computer with that password. Um, why use LAPS? It gives each machine their own password, their own random password. So what you end up with is lots of machines with lots of accounts, and each account has its own separate password. This is, so this, you can still have your common administrator uh, account on these machines, and each one has a completely different password. Um, the intent for this is to make lateral movement between devices impossible in case your password gets out. Access to your AD needs to be protected in order to protect the passwords. Uh, this is uh, an easier task to do than trying to protect the password, uh, a common password that you leave everywhere. Um, now the policy that we set, uh, and this is just speaking on what we do in CSRO, is, is our policy is that the local admin account is something that is an emergency use. So this is not something that you go to on the daily to get your password to, so you can do admin tasks on this machine. Uh, we would use a, a dedicated um, Active Directory based administrator account. Um, so how you do it internally is up to you, but that's what we do. And the reason for that is, is looking up passwords, it does introduce uh, some complexity. So it's not just you can't just remember the password for a machine and off you go. These passwords are going to expire. Uh, on a regular basis. Uh, yes, so that's more. Well, anyway. Um, passwords get changed automatically when they expire uh, based on the date that you set. Uh, as I said before, not intended as primary access. So this is on Windows devices. So what about Mac? Um, so our friend on Slack, Josh D. Miller, wrote Mac OS Laps. Uh, this was released last year. Uh, initial, oh, was it released last year, maybe the year before. The initial release was a uh, Python script. Uh, he then converted that to Swift. Uh, so it's a fully native Mac OS app. The source code is available on GitHub. Uh, you can go and check it out. You can read it. You can, make, you can vet it. You can pass it through to your security team so they can vet it. Uh, you can compile it and sign it so that you know that it's being, the version that's being run is the version that, uh, that you've signed internally. Uh, you can do that, or you can just Google for Mac OS Laps. It's the first hit. Uh, so the features that Mac OS Laps gives you is that uh, you can configure it uh, using managed uh, configuration profile, or you can just set it with a plist. Uh, the local admin account can be any account you want. So on Windows, it's, it's administrator. Uh, with Mac OS Laps, you can set any named account, any local, yep. Is it just one account? It's just one account. So you can, any named account, and, oh, any other questions, feel free to interrupt, by the way. Uh, so yeah, any account you want, uh, but one account. Um, it will uh, remove the local account keychain if the password uh, change has completed. So it'll, uh, it'll clear that out for you. 
uh, and you can restrict the characters you can use. So if, for example, you don't like you know, weird characters in your passwords, uh, then you can elect to not include those in the password generation. Uh, all the logs are written uh, to macOSLaps.log, and so you can forward that through to any, uh, like Splunk or any other uh, logging tool that you might want to use. Uh, so the plist. So the plist is actually called that if you wanted to recompile the app to um, write to a different plist, you could. Uh, the default, uh, and what I'm going to go through here is just the defaults for the for Mac OS Labs. If you download the tool now, uh, so everything's stored in that. Uh, these are the defaults that get set. So if you don't set anything, this is what you'll get. So the local admin will just be admin. Default 60 days and a password length of 12. Uh, the 60 days and 12, when you're writing your plist, you need to make sure that these are set as ints. If you just do a default write, password length 12, it'll write 12 in as a character string. And then when laps runs, it will, or it may, uh, read that and interpret it as a string and then wig out because it's expecting a number. So just make sure to set that as an int when you're, when you're writing those. Uh, the other options that you get are uh, remove keychain, which is a bool, uh, remove past characters, which is a string of characters you want to remove, and exclusion sets. So if you wanted to exclude an entire set of characters, uh, you can do that. So for example, you can exclude all symbols, or you can exclude all uppercase. Uh, it has one command line option, which is reset password. Uh, when, by default, when you run Mac OS Laps with no parameters, what it will do is it will talk to AD. It will try to recover the password expiration date. If it can't find one, it will uh, process the password expiry and rewrite the password and write that up to AD. Uh, otherwise, it will. Um, we have to go over, am I? Um, otherwise, it will. Um, uh, it will just ignore it and just continue. Uh, if you leave the default. That's the kind of password you might get. So it's a 12 character using all character sets. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to type in. Uh, so you might want to do something like set exclusion sets to symbols, uh, change your local admin account to something else, uh, change your expiration time from 60 days, say to 14, or whatever your security says, and change the password length to something a little bit more manageable. Might be shorter, might be longer. Uh, so that previous password, so that one, can then look something like that instead. So it's a little bit easier to type in, it's a little bit easier to understand, uh, especially if you are using a tool where you, have, where you can't copy and paste from. Uh, there is a Mac OS, uh, Mac OS, Mac OS Labs, Mac OS Labs uh, on Slack. Uh, so jump in there, have a, have a chat, um, everyone's friendly. Uh, what if you're not binding to AD? Uh, what if you're using um, you know, something else, like you're using, uh, well, I don't have it here. Uh, something like uh, Nomad or, or whatever. Um, laps for Jamf. I know this is a Jamf, not a uh, non Jamf stream, but I've got one Jamf slide. Uh, two actually. So uh, this uh, particular GitHub is a Laps for Mac. Uh, it's a Bash script, and it writes a password to a extended attribute in Jamf. Um, I didn't write it, uh, so. If but go there and have a look. It should be fairly simple to understand. It's just using the standard Jamf APIs. Um, I am working on a lapse for Monkey Report, so a module that will store your password up in the Monkey Report database. So that I was hoping to have ready for this uh, talk, uh, but uh, and unfortunately I'm not able to demo it for you. So it will be coming soon. Uh, check out my GitHub um, at some point. I'll probably announce it in uh, Slack uh, when it's around. I did write a laps agent for Linux, so if you're doing Linux bounds to AD, I've got that as well. Uh, that's my GitHub for that. Um, any questions? We're at the 29 minute and 40 second mark, according to my clock. I've got one. Uh, yeah, at the moment with an AD bound Mac, if you're using that laps for Mac, it doesn't have to be AD bound. It'll do the change password and it'll store the password in Jamf. 
Um, so that uh, and um, the Monkey Report versions, they will not be. Uh, they don't have the. They won't have the requirement to be AD bound. Um, Laps uh, by design from Microsoft is an AD product. Uh, so what we're doing here is essentially taking the concept of Laps and then applying that to to other areas. So. Okay, so what kind of So let's say you've implemented it. Yep. And you have a staff member that's been away for four months and comes and brings their machine back. Yep. And for some reason the um, machine object's been pruned out of AD or whatever. Yep. Um, what's the recovery scenario for that thing? So uh, if you if it if it can't write to AD, uh, it will be whatever the last password was. Uh, so it won't, the AD record, unless you, if you're pruning uh, the AD record entirely, then you'll lose that password. Uh, so you'll have to use other methods to get onto the machine. Um, one particular scenario is if you're um, file vaulting your hard drive. Um, so if you reset the password for an admin account, say you've got the admin account that is able to unlock file vault, um, you won't be able to unlock the file vault with that admin account with the new password. Um, in my particular testing, uh, file vault still accepts the old password, but that only unlocks the drive, doesn't log you into the computer. Uh, so in that scenario, you would look at, um, uh, if you're doing file vault, you'd be either escrowing a key or using a, a um, uh, what do they call it, not an enterprise key. Um, just, yeah, using a, a managed key for your file vault. Uh, so you would unlock the computer that way and do whatever maintenance tasks you do. Uh, I'll, I'll reiterate that the, the, main, um, the main purpose for, for this is your, uh, your emergency account sort of thing. So uh, you'll have to look at, if you remember that sort of puzzle diagram in the beginning, Laps is only a bit of that. So you'll, you'll have you know, uh, escrow of your file vault keys, you can have Laps, you can have managed accounts, all that sort of stuff. So you, how you fit that together? It depends on your environment. So, questions? Thank you. All right, any more questions? No? Um, I'm at Bart Reading on all these things. Uh, so, Twitter, GitHub, Instagram, Slack. Uh, feel free to reach out, jump into the Mac OS Labs um, uh, Slack group, and yeah. Any issues? Get us up there. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. All right. <laughs>